Hi, I'm Sides, a singer, songwriter, producer, and in this video, I'm going to show you my music production starter pack. I will also show you the things that I have upgraded along the way. The only thing you need as a music producer is a digital audio workstation, also known as a DAW. Believe it or not, you can have a DAW straight from your phone. There are tons of apps like BandLab or GarageBand that you can download on your app store for free. GarageBand is only for Apple users, but still, if you have an iPhone, you already have a DAW available to you. Also, if you have an iPad or a tablet, you also have a DAW available to you. That is really all you need to be a producer. Now, if we wanna add more things to our studio, here are some things that I recommend that are on a budget. First thing is a computer. If you wanna use Apple products like GarageBand and Logic, I really recommend getting a Mac computer. These can be a hefty price tag, but it's worth it in the long run. In my opinion, I'm an Apple loyalist. So that computer you can get used, a MacBook Pro. You know, you wanna make sure that it has a good enough power because as you're gonna be adding tracks, it will get frustrating. It'll slow down your CPU and, and whatnot. But you could probably get a good used one for about $1,000 to $1,500 or keep an eye out for sales and whatnot. The computer is definitely gonna be the most expensive investment for your studio. Now, if you don't wanna use Apple products, you could get a PC or a laptop PC, I'm pretty sure for just a couple hundred bucks. So you can look into that. And then you have a host of DAWs that you can use. Let's talk about DAW options. So once you have your computer, now you have a bunch of choices for digital audio workstations. My favorite is Logic. Logic is one-time fee of $199. And I think you also can get a 90-day free trial. If that is too much for you to invest in at this moment, any Apple computer comes with GarageBand for free. GarageBand is a great place to start. I started with GarageBand. One of my favorite things about GarageBand is when you do decide to upgrade to Logic, you can open up any of your GarageBand projects in Logic. It's really just like a light version of Logic, so GarageBand is awesome. A lot of more electronic music producers really like Ableton, Pro Tools, if you're more into recording live instruments, a lot of people like Pro Tools, you know, hip hop, a lot of those producers use um, FL Studios, you know, there's Studio One, which is by Personas. There are so many DAWs that you can look into, kind of just like how Logic has its free version GarageBand, pretty much every DAW has a free version that you can try. Some of these DAWs run on subscription models, so you pay a little bit every month, and that's how you get to use the DAW. Some of them you have to buy, and then every single time they have an upgrade, you have to rebuy into that upgrade. The reason why I love Logic is because it's a one-time fee of $199. It's super user-friendly in my opinion, and also you get Apple support. So if you're ever struggling, Apple support is there for you 24 hours a day. You can just call them up and they will walk you through everything. They will, you know, jump into your computer and show you what you can do. So really awesome tool. You definitely get to start charging more money when you have more proper equipment. So if you wanted to do more professional equipment, but still on a budget, you can buy an interface. I started off with Focusrite. Focusrite is about $179. There's a bunch of different options. There's also a really good interface by Presonus that is, I think, $179 too. And these are super easy because you just plug them into your computer and they just kind of magically work. They magically show up. There's no learning curve to them. It's, it's very straightforward and simple. All of these have support too if, if you have any questions with tech, but really affordable. That is the way you can record your instruments and record your voice. The next step would be a microphone. You can buy a microphone for $10,000 or you could buy a microphone for a couple hundred dollars. So I started off with the Rode NT1-A. This came with a mic cable, an XLR. I bought like the bundle where it came with a pop filter, everything that you would need to, to plug this in and play basically. And that was about $220. I made this back really quickly because I was selling my vocals. So you kind of like make back your investment. You invest in yourself because I was charging more with this microphone than I was with the USB microphone, which was surprisingly not that much cheaper than this. So, I mean, the only thing is that you have to buy an extra interface, right? So that is why I went with this one. As you get more into it or you get more jobs, you can kind of slowly invest in yourself to, you know, get the next mic or the next mic or the next mic. After you have your microphone, um, you will want a mic stand. So. Mic stands, you can get them really cheap for about like 20 bucks or 10 bucks on Amazon. I really wanted this microphone stand, which is kind of sturdy and it has a clip because sometimes I like to just sit down and I'm too lazy to like get up and 
you know, this is just an extra luxury. I think this mic stand, mic stand was $70, totally unnecessary. This one's by Gator Frameworks. And then the other thing I got with my microphone in my stand is this Chaotica Eyeball, which is uh, surprisingly expensive for what you think a foam ball. So even though my mic did come with a pop filter, at the time when I was recording vocals, I was living in New York City and there was just no way to treat the room. So I had to think of a quick solution fast. And one of my friends recommended this eyeball. So I went with it. It is quite controversial among the audio community. Obviously it would be better if I could treat the room and I can invest in that, but I, at the time I didn't want to or couldn't afford to, and I still haven't. So I still use the Chaotic Eyeball. I think it sounds great to me, but up to you. This is kind of expensive, like I said, $200. There are plenty of knockoffs that you can get on Amazon that are cheaper. I've actually made a video one time comparing the two and I still think the Chaotic Eyeball is a little bit better, but you know, for the price difference, I think, yeah, it might be worth it to just start with that. And it also depends, like if you're not selling your vocals, you don't really need to have to have it perfect. So many songs are made in people's bedrooms that that's what you know people are going for. It's more about the emotion and the performance in my opinion. After the mic, after the interface, something else that I really find useful is to have a MIDI keyboard. This is the first MIDI keyboard I bought and it is my favorite MIDI keyboard. It was only a hundred bucks. It's called the X6 Mini by MIDI Plus. I like it because it has four octaves and it's super narrow, so it just fits right on my desk. It doesn't have any fancy pad or any fancy controls, but it works for me. I hate the small octave ones because I like to be able to use the full octave, so I'm obsessed with this MIDI keyboard. I've gotten some better ones and I still prefer to use this one, so I stick with that. Another thing that you really will want is studio headphones, right? So you don't want to just use like normal normal headphones because they don't have a full frequency range. When you're starting producing, you really want to pick sounds and make your compositions so that the full frequency range is being covered. A drum kit is a really good example of something that has covering the full frequency region, right? So the kick will take over the lower frequencies, toms and snares will take over the middle frequencies, and then hats are taking over the high frequencies. So when you see a drummer just playing kind of like a song on its own and it sounds so full, that is one of the reasons why it does that. So when you're using headphones, if you're using crappier headphones, maybe sometimes you can't hear the bass, and that's because it's not showing off the, the lower frequencies. It's not that it's not there, it is there, but you just can't hear it on those specific headphones. So that is why you really do want to invest in some better quality headphones. Again, you can spend hundreds of dollars on headphones, but for this, you don't have to break the bank. Actually, my favorite headphones are on the cheaper side. They're these Personas HD9, 85 bucks. Um, they're so comfortable on my ears. I've used the more expensive ones that are, you know, the more legit or the more industry standard ones and I find that they just squeeze on my temples and they're so uncomfortable. So I really like these. Personas makes some really great audio gear at a super affordable rate. If you have these, this is all you need, but if you wanted to invest in studio monitors, it's also nice to have monitors in case you don't want to wear headphones. And again, you want, you can't just use regular speakers, like you want speakers that are going to cover the frequency spectrum. Again, it comes in a pair of two, but these are the Personas E3.5 studio monitors. These are a hundred bucks. So I think they mark it as 99.95. These are small but mighty, you know, don't underestimate these. So I started off with these. I don't use them that much anymore, but if I had the extra room, I would probably still plug them in because it's so nice to, to reference multiple monitors. So I would recommend these hundred bucks, like I said, super affordable. The last thing that I would recommend, well, there's a few accessories I would recommend if you can. A mouse, 10, 12 bucks. It's just a lot easier to navigate through your project. You know, if you wanted a separate keyboard, again, you can get one really cheap, 20 bucks. By keyboard, I mean typing keyboard. These are just little luxuries. But yes, the last thing that I really recommend um, you get is a hard drive. So you can find hard drives from, depending on how big and how much you want them. I got a two terabyte hard drive for 200 bucks, but you can definitely find one cheaper. Um, but this is really good because you don't wanna save all of your projects to a laptop. It will really slow down your laptop. These projects get big fast. And especially when you're first starting out, you're gonna be adding a bunch of stuff on them and it's really gonna slow down your computer. So definitely get a hard drive. But other than that, that's pretty much all you need to get started as a producer. So I did the math. It came up as an average, let's say, 
somewhere between a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to really get started and make some incredible music that might be the cost of paying for a producer to produce one song so you really do make your investment back fast as you grow as a music producer and maybe get more gigs you can upgrade your gear slowly here are some of the things that i've upgraded okay first i've upgraded my microphone so as you know i started with the rode NT1-A, and now I use the Slate virtual mic system. Um, I'm still using the Kaotica Eyeball. One day, my next upgrade maybe will be when I move to a new place, I will properly treat my studio, so I won't need to use that, and I can maybe use a shield, or maybe I'll invest in a vocal booth. Who knows, but this is what I'm working with now. I really like the Slate virtual mic system because it comes with a software where you can actually switch out this mic for other mics that are worth thousands of dollars. So with a click of a button, you can actually change to a different mic locker that maybe you can't afford. Something else I've upgraded is my studio monitors, which is the Atom A7X. These ones are a more expensive, but it was just kind of like a nice upgrade. Maybe you can see they're not in the most correct spot because I don't have the right space. But again, once I move to a bigger space or a bigger studio, I'll be able to put them in the correct spot, but still really nice to have. They sound amazing. Big fan of Atom monitors. My computer, I did get an upgrade in a computer. I was very tired of, you know, when, when you're producing a lot, you get very tired of how long your tracks take to upload and whatnot. So having the, now I have the newest Mac Studio. This is amazing. This is like amazing. Now it takes like a blink of a, a second to open a project and to save a project and to open plugins. And if you're using big plugins like Omnisphere, Contact, they just work so quickly. So I really love this studio. This is definitely a hefty price tag, but I think it's worth it. I'm hopefully gonna be using this for a really long time. And I do a lot of Zoom calls and Zoom collabs. So the built-in camera is amazing. Um, and also if you're like editing videos and stuff like that, the color is just beyond, like it, it just looks like real life. It's so good. Another really big upgrade was my interface. I out now use the Universal Audio Apollo Twin X. This kind of hurt when I bought it because it's almost like the same price of a computer. I think it was like $1,400. And then of course I bought some plugins with the bundle. But for me, this was life-changing because I just do so much vocal work. You can monitor through their plugins and record through them. And even though it is expensive, I, I just really think it's worth it. When I was using the Focusrite, I was getting a lot of latency and this completely eliminates the latency. So a lot of reasons when your computer has to work really hard and you put some plugins on it, then you know, if you put some reverb or auto tune on it, it, it won't work as well and it requires you to have latency. So you'll, you'll, you'll sing it, you'll hear the track and then you'll sing and it'll feel delayed. So having the Apollo has completely eliminated that. I definitely think it has been worth it for me, but definitely something I only bought when I knew I was really serious on about taking this to the next level. So that's what I've upgraded to. Obviously, I mean, for me, even though it sounds like, wow, she spent a lot of money, I've made a lot of money doing producing work, doing singing gigs. So it was worth it for me. And I really believe you have to spend money to make money. And now I can charge way more for, you know, vocal work or sample work or whatever, just because I feel like also with my computer and recording vocals, I can record them faster. And when you're doing this kind of work, time is money. The more stuff you can do in a shorter amount of time really goes a long way. For the third bit of this video, I'm gonna talk about my wish list, things that I would love to upgrade to. My main thing is kind of like a whole new studio. I want like a proper producing desk. I really like like the output studio desks. Um, maybe I'll do a DIY project of building a desk myself and just properly treating the room. Um, that's my next step along the way. So what this just shows you is that it doesn't take that much money to start. And as you grow, you can grow with your studio. You can invest slowly. You can build space by space. Don't let, you know, people say that, oh, you have to build out a full studio, full proper studio with your, with your monitors and everything placed correctly in order for you to make great music. You don't need that. You can start with as little as a phone or an iPad. I'm super excited for you to create I hope this video inspired you. Comment below maybe what's on your wish list or something that you loved that you started off with. My DMs are always open. You can always DM me at Sides on Instagram or send me an email at SidesProduction.com. Also, Produce Like a Pro can answer any of your questions that you might have. Thank you for watching and see you guys on the World Wide Web.